Hello and welcome to another edition of Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. On this program, we examine the political, social, and moral issues in the leadership of the Bahamas. And on our program today, we're pleased to bring you a former Minister of Government who will discuss the general elections of 2017. We'll be right back after these messages. It's a new day. This is our new day. And in the blue glow of the morning, there's still time to reach back into our dreams. To become dreamers in the daylight. And live our lives and hopes with open eyes. Yes. This is the day to do the things that will fill our lives with joy and with love. Dreamers in the daylight, anything is possible. This is our new day. We are alive. said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. Hello. Did you get it? Yes, baby. I got it. Don't come home without it. These arms of my life, they are yearning, yearning for wanting you. Where is it? Strongback is distributed by the Jamaica Bahamas Import and is available at your favorite food or convenience store nationwide. For more information, call 341-4091 in Nassau and 351-8282 in Freeport. You bring passion and we bring world-class infrastructure and innovation that's designed to help your business grow. You have determination. We've got your back with a super fast LTE network, giving you access to whatever you need, when you need it. You offer superior service, we put you in control. With a dedicated care team to look after your business 24-7. Together, we have the advantage. Alive. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. I'm here today with a former government minister under the Ingram administration, Mr. Fenton Nemore. Mr. Nemore, welcome to Nation Building. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a, it's a good thing for you to be back with us. Uh, you were not a candidate in this election, and so I, I, I believe you had a very uh, relaxed uh, situation where you weren't 
nervous about winning or losing, and uh, I think you might have participated, did you, in helping someone in the campaign? Yes, I did. It wasn't relaxed at all. Uh, I was very active in the campaign in St. Barnabas with Shannon and Cartwright. Uh, I led him and his team down there, and we were very successful. And so, it, uh, in fact, uh, I worked just as hard as a candidate. And oh, so, okay. I was uh, indeed pleased with the results. Good. So, you uh, were not um, one of those who decided that not getting a nomination would cause you to sit it out? No, uh, I'm a member of the Free National Movement. And that is what uh, the organization that I support. And the fact that I was not chosen as a candidate should not uh, diminish my commitment to the organization and the ideals to the organization. Uh, when that happened, uh, I identified Shannon Cartwright as a young F&M uh, who I saw with great uh, ability and uh, whose ideals I wanted to uh, promote within the organization. And so I actually volunteered to him my services. And he gladly uh, accepted it, and I went to work for him. Good. Uh, Mr. Nemour, the general elections of 2017 was most historic in our country's history, as you know. Never before, in fact, my records say never before in the Caribbean, and to my knowledge, certainly not in the Western world as far as I know, do you have a sitting prime minister not only losing the general election, but losing his seat. What, in your mind, accounted for that devastating wipeout that the Progressive Liberal Party suffered? Uh, like I said uh, to others, uh, this was a message being sent by the Bahamian people to all political parties, not only the PLP, but the FNM and the DNA. Uh, the Bahamian people basically said that we are not going to accept uh, corruption, we are not going to ex uh, accept the lack of accountability, um, and that the end, at the end of the day, uh, the politicians work for the Bahamian people, and they are answerable to the Bahamian people. And so uh, they sent a message, um, and it was very clear. They didn't take any chances. Um, if you look at some of the voters when they came to the polls, they didn't wear colors. Uh, there were very few people wearing colors, uh, so they weren't expressing their commitment to any organization. And so they came, they voted, and made it very clear who they wanted. And if you look at the results, not only uh, did the PLP receive its lowest percentage ever, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, this was the largest margin of victory in the history of the Bahamas. Prior to today, the largest uh, margin of victory was in 1997 when the FNM, FNM won, won over that the, over, Yeah, won over now, the PLP. I, I know the seat count was not quite as significant as it is now, but the, but certainly the, the the in 1997, the Progressive Liberal Party, then led by Sir Lyndon Pinlin, was left with six seats, and then shortly after, of course, when he resigned by election. Uh, brought them down to five seats. Um, they I, then, I think it was seven. If no, it, it was six. They, they, they had two seats in New Providence. Uh, they had um, the seat in Saint, in, in, um, that Galan has held, Engliston, mm -hmm. which, which, which this time is the only one that has survived. They had uh, Dr. Well, uh, in fact, I think it was three. They had Dr. Nottage's seat uh, at the time as well, and uh, um, Bain Town. Oh, well, you, you may be right, because Perry Christie was, exactly. was, a, was a survivor in that election as well. So, the point is, um, the PLP has, um, this is, though, they've never been left with four seats. They've, yes, they've never been left with this margin. In fact, in 97, the FNM won 34 seats. I, I remember it vividly, and the reason why I remember the 34 seats is because uh, Hubert Ingram rang the bell on R.M. Bailey Park 34 times. 34 uh, times. B before the election. And, and so it was a, an accurate prediction. Um, but what is uh, critical in this particular stage is that in 1997, those PLPs who survived were very experienced. They were the Cynthia Mother Pratt's, the Bernard Nottage, the Perry Christie's, uh, etc. Uh, in this particular case, um, they only have two with cabinet experience. 
uh, that is uh, Philip Brave, Brave Davis, Davis. Uh, and Glennis, Englishton, Glennis yeah, Hannah Martin. And, and Glennis Hannah Martin. Uh, they have Picewell Forbes, and then they have the newcomer Chester Cooper, Cooper. Uh, which will make it even more challenging for them to mount uh, an opposition. However, the Progressive Liberal Party is a organization that functions well in opposition. They know how to uh, uh, in fact, but the players you say they function well in opposition, but the players that uh, made that effective opposition you 're talking about Perry Christie, B. J. Nottage, Mother Pratt, uh, Brave Davis was there, um, Galanis was there. You, those players are no longer um, they, I mean, they don 't have those people at the table anymore, so even though their numbers were small. And initially, Salinden, when they went back to the House uh, immediately after the 97 election, those numbers, though small, st now is pale. This here is pale compared to then because you only have two uh, cabinet ministers surviving now, whereas then you had Nottage, Dr. Nottage, you had Brave Davis, you had uh, Mother Pratt wasn't a part of the Pinland cabinet before, so she was a first timer. But you had uh, Nottage, Brave Davis, and you had Galanis wasn't a part of the cabinet, but he was very effective also. And you had Bradley Roberts as well. And Big Brad was very effective. In fact, many said that he was one of the most effective tools, if you will, that brought the, the progressive liberal party back. So you must admit that in contrast, this is a really, really bad situation. Not really. If you, I will give you a, a recent example. Okay. Opposition politics. Only a part of it is House of Assembly politics. Opposition politics relates to getting your message out on the ground. The PLP functions well getting their message out on the ground. So why if, didn't they, if they are so good at functioning, let me why finish my get point. the message out now? Let me finish my point. Prime Minister Minis, in fact, was in a similar position when the vote of no confidence came in him. He only had the support of two members of parliament what, recently in, in opposition. But he was able to... Three. Mobile, well, yes. Two. Right. There were three of them. Right. Two was two support. Mm -hmm. But he was able to mobilize the free national movement on the ground and still got his message out. And in fact, the, fa the, 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 the fact that there were only three of them really had little impact on him getting his message out in achieving this victory. And so the House of Assembly is only a, a, a segment of being a, a, a part of the opposition. So do not underestimate the capabilities of the Progressive Liberal Party having only four members of Parliament. Interesting. You worked in um, Shannon Dawes Cartwright's uh, in St. Barnabas helping Mr. Cartwright, who ended up with 1,269 votes to the um, if my, if my numbers are correct, I think those are incomplete results. Th those are inc right. Those are, but we. I mean, that's what we have for the for the time being. You the the margin of victory. What was your what was the margin of victory as uh, you recall? Uh, after the recount, it was almost six hundred votes. Six hundred votes. Yes. Right. Okay. That's that's what I have here too. And the the DNA ended up only getting one hundred and forty five votes. Just for a moment. Well, if we'll talk some more about the PLP. What do you make of the, the DNA not even getting um, the votes that it acquired the last election or even coming close to that? In fact, they ended up with 4 point something percent of the vote compared to 8.49 percent in the last election. So less than, basically half. First of all, DNA's experience um, is not just... Uh, an experience in the Bahamas is a Caribbean experience. Basically, in the Caribbean, we are accustomed to a two-party system. Mm -hmm. uh, in order for a new or a third party to be successful, generally, one of the two major parties has to die. The DNA's experience in this election was very similar to an organization you and I know very well called the CTR mm -hmm. in 2002. In fact, the percentage of votes that the DNA got uh, mirrors that, that of the CDR in, in 2002. 2002. In 2002. And in 2002, the Bayman people had a message then too, as uh, they delivered. So the commitment at the end of the day, the Bayman people were not taking a chance 
with a third party. Uh, they were not splitting their votes, and they went with who they for, felt was the best uh, replacement organization. And so the DNA has to assess and has to go through the same process that the CDR went through after 2002 to determine their relevance going forward, determining whether they have the resources to go forward, considering the fact that they have an experience the CDR did not have, which is that their performance was worse than the previous election. They also have to determine whether their message was relevant and what is it that the Bahamian people seek. And so they have, in fact, a greater challenge than the CDR had in 2002. But isn't it just a reality, uh, Mr. Nemo, that third party politics in our country is just not going to cut it? We're we're gonna, we're gonna, in the Caribbean, it's not just the Bahamas. We're going to speak more directly to that when we come back from this break. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and we'll be right back after these messages. bring passion and we bring world-class infrastructure and innovation that's designed to help your business grow you have determination we've got your back with a super fast LTE network giving you access to whatever you need when you need it you offer superior service we put you in control with a dedicated care team to look after your business 24 7 together we have the advantage alive let's do this Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahama product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Barton from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is... <laughs> it's a little bit. Hello. Did you get it? Yes, baby. I got it. So we come home without it. These arms of mine, they are yearning, yearning for more seeing you. Strongback is distributed by the Jamaica Bahamas Import and is available at your favorite food or convenience store nationwide. For more information, call 341-4091 in Nassau and 351-8282 in Freeport. Alive knows what you do today will determine the success of your tomorrow. So we've invested in world-class infrastructure and innovation so every business in the Bahamas can grow. Like our online business account that lets you manage all your business mobiles simply and efficiently through one portal. From adding users and numbers to drilling down where you can view details of individual data, calls, and texts to providing an immediate overview of usage month on month, we put you in control. Our people are here to help your business grow. Our relationship managers take the time to understand your business. And with our care team and our live stores, we are there to support your business needs. So let's work together, Bahamas. Let's grow together. Let us be part of your team. Let's do this. Who's 
that you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corn Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. No, no. It's a new day. This is our new day. And in the blue glow of the morning, there's still time to reach back into our dreams. To become. Dreamers in the daylight and live our lives and hopes with open eyes. Yes, this is the day to do the things that will fill our lives with joy and with love. Dreamers in the daylight, anything is possible. This is our new day. We are alive. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. I'm here today with Mr. Fenton Nemo, former Minister of Government in the Ingram administration. Mr. Nemo, we were talking about the fact that a third party, not only in the Bahamas but in the Caribbean, um, is certainly a failing exercise. I vividly recall not just the CDR experience here in the Bahamas, but in Jamaica there was a similar political organization. Um, I, I can't. I think it was Bruce Golding. Bruce Golding. I can't yes. remember the name of the party, but I remember uh, vividly that. And looking at the mirroring, the history of this gentleman who ultimately became prime minister when he went back to his political fold uh, and became the leader. Uh, maybe there's a message here for Branville McCartney. I don't know. If, if I were to ever say anything to him, I would. I would advise him to go look at the story of Mr. Bruce Golding, who eventually became the Prime Minister of but, Jamaica. But, but, but circumstance is very different. And I will, I will share my knowledge of that situation because I think there is much to be gained uh, by our viewers and by those who follow politics. Golding left his party, the Jamaica Labour Party, and started the, and the whatever that movement was. I, I think it was the NDM. I can't remember the name of it for sure but started just like Brand did, and after failing in a general election to capture any seats, and I don't know what the, the, the vote, the number, the percentage of votes they got, but it was very low. After failing in that, and also failing in a by-election, he stepped down as leader, and uh, so, some years later, um, rejoined the, his former political party. Um, became chairman, became intricately involved in the next campaign, and after the party lost that election, he then, um, through some process of support from those in leadership, was eventually ushered into the leadership of the party. That was strategically done because you, you had a, a situation where the leader eventually decided to step down to make way for him and clear the deck. If essentially, because he had many potential challenges that backed off. And you know our politics in, in the Bahamas, just like it is in the rest of the Caribbean, um, which is, many would argue, is a problem in our, with our system. Whoever becomes leader of a political party becomes a, a mini-god. Well, you, I, I, I hope uh, with the victory of the free national movement, uh, Prime Minister Minis takes an opportunity 
opportunity to bring about change in that area. It will be critical. Uh, I don't want to try to become a prophet at this particular time, but I, from my discussions with Bahamians, they are very concerned with the dictatorial positions being put forward by former prime ministers. Uh, they, and that is one of the reasons why they, they were in why office. they were in office, and that is the reason they voted most of them out. And so I think it is a great opportunity for Prime Minister Minis to, uh, in a way, um, uh, pro, 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 put some, give some of that authority to other members of his cabinet and to his organization. I think he's promised some of them, uh, for instance, that he will not hold a cabinet office, uh, a cabinet position. Uh, some of these things. Fixed uh, general election yeah, dates. Fixed general election dates. He's, he's also promised that uh, prime ministers would serve two terms only. Exactly. And so these are things that I think if he were to progress with the Bahamian people would uh, embrace and in fact strengthen. I, I, don't, I, I don't want to be a prophet either, Mr. Nemore, but I would say this. I have seen in many administrations different political parties, this the temptation to get in office and get busy trying to fix economic issues, bread and basket issues, to get people to work and to get investment and ignore reform ideas until, I remember in an interview we did with the former Prime Minister of Jamaica, myself and Wendell Jones, and pressing him on that specific issue that all these lofty promises of reform most of them fell by the wayside and they fell by the wayside in part because they were not tackled early and they get lo they got lost and i'm i'm one observer that is also like many other bahamians watching with interest to see if the if dr minis and the new administration but him in particular as leader would really be bold enough to early in, in his term in the first year or so to push ahead with some of the, the reform ideas. I think if he, yeah. if he does, yeah. the country will be, be better for it and, and I think he will win over a lot of people. Well, you know, Mr. Pinnock, one of the things that I recognized in this general election was that uh, all of the political organizations, in my view, did a very poor job of putting forward their platform. Uh, they did not do a good job of uh, informing the Bahamian people in terms of the key planks of their platform. Uh, they covered certain areas that they may have advised upon. And they were also put out very late. And they were put out very late. Mm -hmm. And so the Bahamian people made their decision without a platform. I think what is most critical is that the leaders of the political organizations do go through a conversion process in that they listen and respond to the request of the Bahamian people. Uh, politicians have not been doing a good job of assessing what is it that the Bahamian people want. But, but uh, uh, to be fair, aren't you and your team, when you got elected in 2007, aren't you also guilty of some of those same flaws of, of, of missing the mark on some of those um, things that you had set out to do. Is that not true? Fair Mr. to say? Pinnock, with old age comes experience. And if one uses experience, sometimes one would get with And uh, yes, we're without sin. Yeah. And, and so uh, I'm speaking from experience, uh, recognizing, for instance, uh, my own personal experience in, uh, in South Beach, in Exuma, etc. The older I get, the more I focus on the people and the less on the political organization. Okay, Let, let's jump along because we have a lot to cover. Uh, and I wanted to just finish my thoughts earlier because I think it's value, it has value, which is that the experience, and I guess my sharing here may be mo um, something that people who are in the DNA, maybe it's leader, may want to take notes from. And that is, you, we talked about the golden experience and we're saying he did not by accident get back to leading his country. It was a effort to recognize the fact that the third parties seem to have no place in our politics in our in our region. There's just simply not the numbers there to sustain 
uh, th these organizations and that people generally seem to have a tendency to go back to their political base, the voters that is, once things get to a fever pitch. But go in Golden's case, he went back, was successful in becoming leader because of an election loss. Um, don't know what would have happened if his return and his party had won, what the leader would have done. But his story is unique. Dr. Nottage also have a similar story that he started the CDR after the election loss, decided to rejoin his former party, the Progressive Liberal Party, and then went on to become a, a, a minister of government. Of course, a number of that team went on to, I think maybe the majority of the team went on to join the FNM, which produced ministers like yourself and, 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 and Mr. Maynard, uh, the late um, um, May, Charles Maynard. So the lesson, if there is one, it's safe to say that uh, third parties really have no place it is extremely difficult in politics. the Bahamas. Not, not in terms of winning, in becoming a successful at winning at the polls. It is very difficult in the Bahamas. Let me tell you an, uh, 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 an aspect that we didn't concentrate on, which makes it even more difficult for a third party. It has to do with our geography. Uh, we have many islands. Um, Jamaica was only, is one, one uh, island. But the Bahamas is very difficult for a third organization to get its message out to the Resources. family. Resources. It's, its message out to the family island and to get that level of commitment mm -hmm. in the family islands. And the DNA recognized that from the CDR experience, from its last election experience. And if you notice, there are certain islands they did not send candidates this time and they focused less on the family islands because they, third parties, plain and simply, do not take root. Uh, in the family islands. And so their challenge really is going to be, they're going to have to focus on New Providence and even look at where in New Providence they if focus. They, if they ask me, they, I think they should focus on the PLB or the FNM and find a home. That's well, just, I said that's they, just need, my, I said they just, need to listen that's, to, that's to the Bruce Golding story. You know, if you, if you want to remain an activist group, I mean, that's fine, in, in my humble opinion, then you can, you can do that. But if you want to uh, find a seat at the table, it is, it is, in my humble opinion, from history, an improbable situation. But moving right along, I want to touch on a few quick things. Um, what then, in, 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 in this short campaign, would you credit most with the Free National Movement's victory? Its leader and his message, which has been traditionally what has worked, or is it just the rejection of the progressive liberal party, not to exclude either or, because certainly the leader must be credited, Dr. Minnis, um, with the victory of the free national movement. Yes, yeah, the leader has to, has to be credited with that. And, there's, and also, I think the leader has to be credited with the fact of recognizing what avenues were available with him for him uh, to get his message out. And I'll give you an example. Uh, the Free National Movement was very effective in getting its message out on social media, which helped them because from a financial standpoint, uh, they didn't have to uh, essentially expend huge sums of money to get their, their message out. And so the FNM was more effective than the Progressive Liberal Party. But to just to be sure, which which one of the two, if we can coin them, was more impactful? The rejection of the Progressive Liberal Party or the acceptance, to, acceptance of the message or the leader of the... Well, if, are, are, well, if you're putting the question that way, um, definitely um, the rejection. If you look at the numbers uh, of the constituent in terms of the, the winning margins in the constituencies, uh, definitely it was a rejection of the PLP. If you look at uh, South Beach, where I was, I, I won uh, in 2007 by a comfortable margin uh, at that particular time. But in this, particular, in this election, winning almost two to one was unheard of. Uh, uh, any, any time in, in but, the Bahamas. But let me ask and you. And so it was a clear rejection of the PLP. Didn't Dr. Minnis in his strategy, we, we tried to get him on this program, I mean we've been trying and, and I'm sure most other media houses, um, programs, uh, similar radio and TV programs, would have, would have been trying to get the leader of the, 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 the now Prime Minister to, to sit. And he, he wasn't, he isn't hit to his credit 
that he decided not to focus on this type of platform um, to get his message out and to do uh, to rely on whatever strategies uh, they use and also to for him to recognize the mood of the country um, was moving in a certain direction isn't it wasn't it his wisdom that uh, strategize that and, and, and got you, that result? What, what must be said is you have to give him credit for recognizing what was necessary to win. Mm -hmm. And whatever it was, uh, he identified it. Uh, some of the areas that he, he recognized early, I, I know that, uh, he recognized social media uh, was an avenue available to the FNM and he utilized it very effectively. And he had teams together and, and his message went out very clear. Um, in that regard. And so, he has, he has to be credited with coming together with the right formula uh, to bring about victory. But clearly, it was a rejection of the PLP. Okay. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. We'll be right back after these messages. Alive knows what you do today will determine the success of your tomorrow. So we've invested in world-class infrastructure and innovation so every business in the Bahamas can grow. Like our online business account that lets you manage all your business mobiles simply and efficiently through one portal. From adding users and numbers to drilling down where you can view details of individual data, calls, and texts to providing an immediate overview of usage month on month, we put you in control. Our people are here to help your business grow. Our relationship managers take the time to understand your business. And with our care team and our Alive stores, we are there to support your business needs. So let's work together, Bahamas. Let's grow together. Let us be part of your team. Let's do this. said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. Hello. Did you get it? Yes, baby. I got it. So we come home without it. These arms of mine, they are yearning, yearning for wanting you. Where is it? Strongback is distributed by the Jamaica Bahamas Import and is available at your favorite food or convenience store nationwide. For more information, call 341-4091 in Nassau and 351-8282 in Freeport. It's a new day. This is our new day. And in the blue glow of the morning, there's still time to reach back into our dreams. To become dreamers in the daylight. And live our lives and hopes with open eyes. Yes, this is the day. Things that will fill our lives with joy and with love. 
dream is in the daylight. Anything is possible. This is our new day. We are alive. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahama product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Bartlett from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is... <laughs> it's a little bit. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. I'm here with Mr. Fenton Nemore, former Minister of Government in the Free National Movement. Uh, Mr. Nemore, there was much to be said about the Parliamentary Commissioner's Office and the former Parliamentary, now former Parliamentary Commissioner, Mr. Hall. Um, What's your thoughts about the debacle at the Parliamentary Registration Office? Well, at the Parliamentary Registration Office, we, we go through this every election. Uh, some of the issues uh, coming out of the uh, department was unacceptable to me. Uh, however, you know, there's a responsibility for all candidates that wasn't focused on in this particular election. Every candidate ought to know who his, well, his constituency, mm -hmm. who are the eligible voters and who are not. Mm -hmm. When I ran in 2007, 2012, I would report to the Parliamentary Registration Office every week, every Friday, I would send them a list of individuals who I would see on the register who, in my opinion, were not entitled to vote. And I would send them that list and who was on the ready so that they can clean it up. And at the end of the day, uh, Mr. Bethel, who was uh, uh, at that time Minister. in charge, he would fix it. And I had no issues in regard. I had no issues in Exuma in 2012. Uh, however, on a weekly basis, I would submit a list of at least 50 people. Uh, I, would, I would have, as a candidate, identified some of these duplications. And so it did not become a public issue because Mr. Bethel communicated effectively with all of the candidates, with all of the political parties. So I think they failed uh, in that re uh, regard. And, and, also, and, and do you lay that blame at the feet of the parliamentary commissioner? At the end of the day, yes, it is his responsibility. And not the but, minister. But, uh, well, the minister has a responsibility of uh, assuring that he had put someone there who's competent. And that's where the criticism lies. Uh, many felt that Mr. Hall was not competent. And so the minister has to take that responsibility and making the necessary adjustments. Or if he felt that he was incompetent, giving him the necessary support. Now, when they eventually uh, changed and put in Mr. Albury, they gave Mr. Albury additional support with Mr. Harrison Thompson, etc. But that was too late. We already had the advance poll, poll. etc. Uh, but at the end of the day, what I wanted to highlight also is that it was the responsibility of the candidates to also ensure that that register is, is correct. And so all the criticism shouldn't just be there. It should be on the candidates who just uh, shouldn't be saying, hey, I found this duplication. Yes, every election we found duplications. Every election we found people who shouldn't have, have voted. But it's your job to know who your constituents are. What, is it time for the country to have an independent parliamentary commissioner that is free of political interference? Um, why change the boundaries every election, Mr. Nemore? Why go through this process? Is it really necessary? Uh, it is necessary, in my opinion, to make adjustments. The problem I have is that the adjustments generally are made based on political but but reasoning. mr but mr nemo which, which in is the last four or five elections 
In 2002, when Hubert Ingram made boundary changes, Tommy Turnquist was the leader of the party, but Hubert Ingram was still prime minister, the, his party lost. In 2007, Perry Christie made boundary adjustments, his party lost. In 2012, Hubert Ingram made the boundary adjustment, but, his party lost. But, but, but they made so every what? election no, no, but, but, adjustments but made. But always the quarrel of gerrymandering and always this nonsense of um, yes, Mr. constituency Mr. Pinnock, boundaries Mr. Pinnock, looking there like... There is gerrymandering. Um, there is. is. No, but, no, but why continue to have this organization be put under this microscope when you can easily put make the parliamentary commissioner independent, Mr. his Mr. office Pinnock, independent, Mr. and avoid... And, 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 and there mu there's a Mr. lot of Pinnock, reforms Mr. that Pinnock. many people argue are needed to, to change Mr. in the Pinnock, system. We have admitted that the Prime Minister has too much power. We've admitted that. We also need to admit that those in power make boundary changes to their advantage, and which is unfair. Work. And it doesn't and, work. And it goes against democratic principles. And it still doesn't help them. And, and it, it does not, it may help them, but it How? may not be sufficient help. It doesn't help them to win. No, no, it, not it, in the last it, it helps five them. elections. It helps them. But, Mr. Pinnock, let us look at certain areas. That, that happened in this election. If we look at the St. Anne's constituency, St. Anne's goes from Village Road, Montague, all the way around Eastern Road, goes all the way to Yamakroa, turns that bend, and comes back west, and takes into But you're making my point. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. But I'm saying what is, what is essential is the fact that, and, and we, we must admit, is that all political parties have made the adjustments to their advantage. But let me finish my point. Savannah goes all the way to take in Treasure Cove, almost, almost to the prison in Fox Hill. If we look at, let's go in the center, let's go at Tall Pines. Tall Pines is shaped, uh, and so, so, Southern Shores is shaped like an H. But Ms. Ms. We, with the limited time we have left. And I, yes, I, we should I, have a commission, I, an independent commission, and yes, uh, adjustments should be made, and yes, we should set it up in a manner where there's minimal political influence. What about no political influence as opposed to minimal? Mr. Bahamas, you know. Okay. They'll uh, always be said. M m m m Mr. Nemoy, let's, <laughs> let's break down the numbers. Let's break down the numbers. If it's broken, let's fix it. Let's chop it off and start over. Um, let's break down the numbers. The Progressive Liberal Party, as we sit with the unofficial or the, the results, 35 to 4. How does the progressive liberal party recover and, and, and provide the country with the kind of opposition that the country needs? Well, the first thing they need to do is to assess what went wrong, which will take them some time, because a number of things went wrong uh, for the progressive liberal party. Once they've done that, they're going to have to rebrand themselves into a political organization that is acceptable to the Bahamian people. They're going to have to put forth individuals who represent the Bahamian people and who will address those issues uh, going forward, which may be challenging because the Progressive Liberal Party is an institution and it's going to be very difficult for them to say to some of those old heads that you have to sit down, you have contributed, thank you very much, we got to move forward. Who's got to make that decision? The new leader all of, of them. The, the new leader of the PLP? All of those in the leadership. First of all, that decision has to begin with all of those who lost. But, but, but okay, so the PLP is now leaderless. Some assumes that uh, former Deputy Prime Minister uh, Philip Brave Davis will be, in short order, made leader. That is an assumption. But who do you expect to lead the PLP, and will that person have the muscle to make the tough decisions? I, I do not predict what's going to happen politically generally because I've been in these institutions for many years and sometimes there's one little factor that pops up uh, that brings about uh, a change in, in, in the direction being taken. So I will not predict who will become the leader. But I will say this is that I, I knowing the progressive little party, they will look at it strategically. Uh, I am sure that they will look at all avenues because they are an institution that, that evaluates themselves uh, effectively. When they lost in 92, they went through that process. They did not accept 
with the Bayman people were saying. Say, that, that because they had a worse law beaten in, 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 in 97. Which is what they learned from, mm -hmm. which was effective in their victory in 2002. And so I expect that the Progressive Little Party will uh, advance themselves moving forward and look for new individuals who will provide a type of leadership that falls in line with their philosophy. Now, the PLP is effective in that regard. They stick to their philosophy. The FNM is not as firm in that area. But, and so the Progressive Little Party will look at it strategically. And, um, and I'm saying to the FNM, I'm an FNM, do not um, underestimate and, their and, ability and, to quickly regroup and for them to quickly assess what it is that the Bayman people want. The, Mr. Nemo, is it very likely then, with your assessment, that the Progressive Liberal Party will go seeking a Branville McCartney and others? Yes. Not only will they seek the Branville McCartneys who are in the DNA, they will seek those within their organization that they overlooked. And don't even be surprised if they seek FNMs. Like yourselves? Well, <laughs> when you say people like myself, they would seek everybody. Everybody. Do that's, not underestimate that, a, the PLP. That's an interesting one. Um, what, what do you make um, the only progressive liberal party frontliner that had the nerves and the guts to challenge the former prime minister, Perry Christie, and to, to say to the PLPs and the nation, but particularly to the PLPs, that look, if we go down this road, we're going to lose, was Alfred Sayers. Do you no, Leslie Miller. Do you, and, do, and, 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 no, no. Le Leslie is outspoken and he said a number of things, but to challenge Perry Christie for leadership of the party was Alfred Sayers. Do you believe that the progressive liberal party, its stalwart councillors and voting delegates, when it gets an opportunity next, will reward Alfred Sayers for having spoken what apparently was the truth, because the results seem to suggest that he was right. Do they reward him and make him leader, or do you think that they go to Philip Ray Davis, who is the you know, I most, don't, senior, most senior person in the progressive liberal party? I'm not, I'm not sure they will reward him, uh, but the PLP has a tradition, and right now the deck is stacked uh, in the favor of uh, Mr. Davis in terms of not only leadership, but in terms of influence within the organization. W wouldn't it, though, jumping along, wouldn't it then be really not m learning the lesson? Because Philip Brave Davis, for whatever you think of him, he certainly is a part of that old God. He, 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 he's, he's closer in age and he's grouped with the Christie and... And he's, grouped with his, a loss. and he's grouped with a loss. Well, he, he, he would, I'm sure those in favor of him would argue that he won his seat um, comfortably. But the question I have is, and it's just opinion, um, do you think they would be making a mistake going with, not to be personal with Mr. Davis himself, but because of what he represents? Do you think it would be a mistake for them to, to, to go back to that era, or would it be more advantageous to go well, with someone It, it depends on what is advantageous to their political organization at this time. Uh, what is important with political organizations is that one must have a relationship with all of the different segments of that organization. And right now... Um, well, Christie Davis, had the greatest relationship with all segments of the organization, and he, they took a landslide with him, lost. Yes, but... You know, at the end of the day, political organizations go with who they are most comfortable with. And, is that and, and, Mr. and Mr. Davis is one who they're comfortable with. They're also comfortable with Glennis Martin, Hannah. Glennis uh, Hannah Martin? I mean, Hannah Martin, sorry. Uh, and so that is something we need to look at because you're looking at a female uh, who... She's is very feisty, uh, my dad. Yeah, but you have to remember who her father is. Yes, yes. She and has you, and you have to understand the history of her father within the organization. And although she is a, a, a woman, which is a disadvantage in some of our political organization, she also has the history, she has the knowledge, she has the experience. She's witty and sharp. And she's personable. And she knows how to go into every nook and cranny in it, the constituency. It, it, doesn't she, though, represent that old generation by age? I don't think so. Okay. Interesting.
Let, let's talk for a minute before we wrap up about the MINIS agenda. The next five years is the free national movements and it is Hubert Minis again as we said earlier is king of the hill it is it was his way it is he has overcome tremendous obstacle skepticism doubt and challenges to be prime minister of the country he has earned that and so let's talk about his five years what is it that he must do to succeed and and secondly what do you well first of all what do you suspect is his agenda his immediate agenda well the first thing I feel that he has to uh, do is to address those pressing issues that concern the Bahamian people let me give you an example uh, when I left home to come to this show my light was off BEC Obviously, he was having some challenges. Yes, yeah, it sounded it. like you didn't pay your power bill in the first No, no, no. <laughs> I said BC was having challenges. I didn't say I had challenges. Yes. But BC's light was off. He has to address that. We're going into the summer. And so he has those issues. So at the end of the day, he has to address those pressing issues. He also has to include a huge number of his party supporters and those members of parliament who won this election. So he has to address that issue. Now his agenda will definitely define where he goes uh, and only he can determine what that is. But he has to bring, have on that agenda a transition to a new form of government that involves the general public um, more so. Is it very difficult, Fenton Nemo, for Hubert Minnis having 35 members of parliament to satisfy them with, uh, it's tough to live on an MP's salary as a, a representative with all the needs across the country. Is it going to be very difficult for him? It is difficult. I think he has the most difficult uh, challenge uh, amongst anyone because I've counted basically at least 12 to 13 of his members of parliament will not be a minister, will not be in cabinet. And but so. 12? You say you're saying 22 would be in? Because he has 35. Well, well, when you look at ministers, ministers of state, parliamentary secretaries, etc., he can expand that up to... No, no, but let, let, let's, no, before no, no. we close, let's just, with your experience, and you certainly have been there, let's talk about, he's promised not to have what we would say is a gussie made cabinet. What is likely in but terms of... But I said 12 to 13, at least that. So it could be more. Won't be, won't, be, um, won't be ministers. So, so it could be even more. What do you suspect by, by number of ministers junior ministers that let's forget about parliamentary secretary for now what do you suspect that that company? i don't know what that is because i do not know his thinking at this particular and right now uh only he uh you know and, and with time we, we don't know exactly what he will do but at that minimum number and so therefore he will have a stronger back bench that can be very outspoken and traditionally have been very outspoken against the leader uh, because when they're not delivering to their constituents the back bench becomes a force Pinland had this problem you know when Pinland uh, first became prime minister he himself was faced with a situation where the back benches outnumbered the cabinet and they then wanted a vote of no confidence against him so he quickly moved to increase the size of his cabinet and so for minister to, to sit there and believe that that the back benches will not be an issue boy he, he's gonna have a challenge with the back benches well we, we certainly wish him all the best um, because the stability of his, his party is will impact our country and so we we, we wish him um, Godspeed uh, mr. Nemo we've come to the end of our program it's a pleasure to have you here again to do this post election analysis and um, on behalf of all of us at Nation Building, we want to thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for next week's edition of Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pennock. Have a good one.